So here is the cover, one of the covers that I worked on. I took it home with me to embroider and to embellish with sequins and beads. All of this has been hand done by me. I just adore how the sequins just mesh in with the laces and then the beading. So this is one of them and this is another one of the covers that I'm doing. I'm doing two blue covers, so blue toned covers, and then two mint. And I took these with me over the weekend to work on them. This is what I'm going to be doing with the mint fabric. So these are the two journal covers. This is going to be for the mint and this is the blue. Now this is just the base of them. I'm still going to be adding some more embellishments. As you can see, this one hasn't been embellished yet. So you can really see the difference between the sequins and the beads and the magic that that adds to a cover from just collaging different elements onto onto fabric. So these are the two types of journals that I'm going to be creating. There's going to be four, so two of these and two of these. For those who like blue, I'd suggest the blue ones, and for those who like a softer, more mint tone, I'd go with this one. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew my pieces of fabric onto my fabric base, and then I will be ready to finally start adding the sequins and the beads to this one which is going to be quite fun and exciting. So that's typically when I turn the TV on and I just sew to my heart's content while I watch something. So let me go ahead and put you guys on the side and I will start working. Gotta slow down. That's the only bad thing about about hand sewing, especially with such a tiny and thin little needle. You can get pricked. Ow. So now I'm actually going to sew on some of the beads here just to show you. I did a little bit of sewing with hand sewing my sequins on. And I typically like to listen to music when I do this since it is 
very, very time consuming for my blue um, crystal covers, my winter Christmas covers for the blue scheme. This actually took me, and you can see, <laughs> I went very crazy with the sequins and I love it. It just gives it such a beautiful look. And then when you have it in person, when you touch it, it just looks stunning. So this one actually took me, each one individually, about five hours to do with the sequins, with the hand sewing. So I did that on the weekend. So on Saturday and Sunday, I worked on just putting the sequins on both covers and I find it so therapeutic. It does get a little challenging after, you know, the first three hours, you're kind of, you know, <laughs> you're over it, but you know that the finished result will pay off. So now I'm going to do the beading on this um, lace that I have and the way that I do it is I focus on um, one of the little stems and I choose the beads that I want. Now I am going to be using these seed beads. They are very minty, kind of frosty, which is what I love and I like to put them in my little holder here. So let me just move these aside. And I like to put them, if I know I'm going to put a lot of them in one row, I like to put a good amount of my beads in my little holder. And I just put them and plop them onto my needle. So you can see I have all of my beads on my needle, which is very important. You need to make sure you have a beaded embroidery needle, one specially just for this. And then I just pull it through my thread and I see how much more beads I need. And I do need a couple more. So let me put about four more beads on my needle. Put it on my thread. See where it's gonna take me. And I just pass my needle right through. Just so that it's nice and secure, I'm going to pass it again through the middle and put the thread across so that it holds it in place. And our beads are secure. So I'm actually going to be adding beads on random areas of the stems. I personally think it adds so much, so much depth to my journal cover. And it makes it look as if there's ice, like frozen ice, especially with the types of beads that I chose. It makes it look as if there's frozen ice on the leaves of these flowers because this is, this is a floral and a leaf design. And so that's what I love about it is I'm trying to get and transfer that icy crystal um, idea and concept onto fabric, which is very hard because we obviously can't freeze fabric. Once you add water to fabric, it pretty much gets destroyed. You know, I can't add water onto my fabric without destroying it. So this is my way of creating my winter wonderland, but with beads and sequins. So I'm just putting more on my needle. As you can see, I'm really making sure I have enough on the needle this time. There we go. So you can see here, I have a pretty good amount of beads. Pass that through my thread and put my needle through there. Once you know the basics to bead embroidery, you can pretty much do anything. Of course, there are harder techniques out there which are beautiful and create masterpieces, but if you're wanting to do beaded embroidery on your journal covers, I completely recommend you to try it out you don't have to be a pro at it. Of course, you do need to practice beforehand and you need to have patience because this is not a fast process. This does oof, this does take a lot of time, a lot of patience, and um, you need to really love to use a needle and thread and embroider in order to enjoy this. And I think if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to get a beautiful result in the end. So if you love the effect, but you just, you don't have the patience, you don't have the time, the materials to embroider, then just avoid it and try to purchase fabric that already has 
you know, beaded embroidery to it. So if you can't do it or if you don't want to do it, then purchase fabric that already has it. Obviously, the fabric will be a little bit more expensive um, because you're paying for that type of artistry. But um, I like to do both. If I can purchase it and I find one that's beautiful enough, I will buy it. But most of the time, especially if it's for a journal cover, I like to do the beaded and sequin embroidery myself because that's just kind of my signature that I'm adding to the journal. I am giving it a special touch and I'm making it unique by doing it myself. I'm focusing the beads on the inner portions of my cover, not on the sides because the sides will be sewn onto something else. And so when I pass that through my sewing machine, my needle will break. If you pass your needle through beads, it will break and it will break in half and it's very dangerous. It's happened to me I think two times already and it's not going to happen again because it is quite scary. So now I'm going to be taking these beads which are seed beads as well but they're a little bit more wider and more opaque in color as it contrasts with the minty icy blue from the other beads that we used for the leaves. So I like to put three on my needle and I'm focusing them inside of the flower petal. This is very similar to when you're embroidering and you do a French knot. It's very similar to that type of a look. So I just pass my needle through the bead and then back through my fabric. And that is what you end up with. Hopefully you can see it on camera. You get three little beads right in the center of your flower. And I love how this looks. It adds a nice amount of texture without making it too bulky. It adds dimension, texture, and color contrast because this is very blue and icy. And I like incorporating some of those whiter, more brighter tones that tend to represent the snow and that chilliness of nature but without having the frosty effect. And then I'm going to move on to adding sequins on other portions of my cover. Similar to what I did in this cover for my blue winter crystals, you'll see that I've added sequins in random corners just to kind of bring in the balance. And then I will show you what it looks like when I have finished one cover and I will start the same exact process on my second one. So today is another day. As you can see, I didn't get through that much with my mint cover as much as I wanted to. Because I got a notification in the mail that my sequins, I ordered some more sequins and beads, were coming and I also ended up going to a fabric shop later yesterday afternoon and I picked up, let me see if I can get it and zoom in on you. I picked up some of this beautiful iridescent type of, it feels like tool and organza mixed together. It's lovely, it's like a specialty fabric and I'm so excited. This is the type of fabric that you can layer on to different types of fabric and get a beautiful effect to it. So those are specialty fabrics. Okay, and then these are some of the sequins that came in the mail. They're all beautiful white pearl iridescent and three different types of sizes. I just love sequins so much, so I'm very excited that I can finally work with those. And I ended up getting some zitched glass beads in this type of a size and I'm really excited to be working with these because I want to create that crystal snowflake effect onto the cover of my journals. To my blue cover and then going and working on my mint cover and finally finishing the decorating portion with my sequins, with my beads, and with this added specialty fabric. Hopefully I get it done today, if not tomorrow, definitely I will try to get it all done. But I will be putting this project aside just for now, since I do want to start working on selecting the papers to go into my journal, and I need to see if I need to tea stain anything as well. So I'm going to put this project aside and leave it for later today in the afternoon, and I'm going to choose the papers that are going to go into here, measure them, trim them, and have them ready to go when I need to start decorating the pages.
So my plan has actually changed. I thought of ignoring the covers and working on my papers. However, I think now my best bet is to finish the covers today and tomorrow start on the papers. I think that that will be the best for my time and more productive. And sorry if I'm all over the place, my hand is getting tired and this is a heavy camera to hold. So yeah, you guys. So yeah, it's been a project that has been taking me a little bit longer than anticipated, but I have no problem with that because these are going to be incredible and I can't wait to show you the finished results. So yeah, I'm looking at them right now and they're just a bundle of joy. This is my happy shelf and I just keep little treasures of things. This is a little vintage piggy bank um, from Holland, a little mason jar. I just keep regular like random things in there. You can tell I'm obsessed with houses <laughs> and my tiles. I have some buttons, and then this is the cutest thing ever, a little wooden sheep. So cute. So that just stays there. And then, of course, all of my colorful threads. So this is what it looks like. It's the next day with all of the sequins and some of the beading. It's just so beautiful. So this is the mint one. They're all, both of them, have been hand sewn every little sequin hand sewn on there and then the blue one as well so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the blue one and add a little bit more beaded work and then I'm officially done with the covers well let me re rephrase that I'm done with the beading of the sequins and the beads like the hand embroidery and the hand sewing so that's what I'm done with the next part is to turn this basically it's a it's a piece of fabric collaged fabric and turn this into a journal which is where the magic starts to happen well the magic has already started happening but it'll make it look more like a journal and less like just a piece of fabric so I'm going to do that now and I will show you um, the progress that we're making together so it's now time to choose kind of like the backing fabric and what I mean by that is I like to use another fabric on the back of it and either to add support or just for an aesthetic detail, but this is going to be for support. And um, I have six yards of it, so I have a ton of it. And it was $10 a yard, which is an amazing price. So I bought the whole bowl. So it was $65, but this will last me so much. And that's typically the price that I pay for bolts of fabric. And I think in my collection, I have about, I think, 20 bolts of fabric. Yeah, but I buy them over time. So this is the fabric that I'm going to be using for structure and for support. So the covers are finished, as you can see. And right now, I am putting in the interior lining of them. Hello, everyone. <laughs> All right. So my journal covers are finally finished. I'm so happy. They're beautiful. And now I need to fill them in with papers. So I have so many papers to choose from. I have tons and tons of papers, some tea stained pages, some vintage pages, and then this huge stack of tea stained pages. And a quick little tip, I know I've mentioned this in my um, coffee and tea dyeing video, but the secret to getting a beautiful finish on your pages, so a beautiful vanilla cream look to both the back and the front, is you want to start out with cream paper. So paper that looks like this. This is not stark white, so let's compare it to something that is. You can immediately see the difference here. This is stark white and this is cream. So when you tea stain or coffee stain cream paper, you get a beautiful look such as this. Now, if you tea stain or coffee stain white paper, this is what it looks like. Do you see how it's sometimes uneven? There are some areas that are white, some areas that are still tan. This is just a beautiful overall patina to it, and it just it's going to look beautiful inside of my journal. So I cannot wait. 
So I cannot wait to have it all filled up and then I can start decorating it with my fabric and my embellishments. So yeah, so I'm just going to put all of this paper into my journals and I will show you what it looks like when it's all finished. So it's now 12.50, so I did this for about, I think an hour and a half it took me to get all of my papers sorted, selected, prepped, and then cut. Or actually, I think I started at 10, so let's do the math. It does take a little bit longer for the process because I am very picky about the papers that I use and I just want them, I mean, look at this one. I just want them to look so beautiful and they just make me so happy. And the papers that you put into your journal, um, especially what kind of journal you're creating. So if you're creating a journal that is more of like a mixed media journal, then you want to include different papers. But definitely make sure you know what kind of papers you want to include before you start to trim them down. But this is what the journals look like. So as you can see, they are very, very stuffed. I made two signatures this time, and I like including all vintage papers or tea stain pages. I don't like using printable pages on my, or in my journals, because I like to be able to give you guys a really beautiful blank and vintage kind of canvas that you can then personalize with your own types of cards, printables, ephemera, you know, whatever you want. So here are all of my journals, all four of them, the two blue and the two mint. And I'm just so excited. I'm so excited to start decorating. Oh, I'm so excited. They look so pretty. Look at how they glisten. Oh my gosh. So lovely. I love these. Grab my scissors, cut this off. Ooh, here it is, you guys. I am so excited to start working with this. Can you guys see it? I hope it's not getting washed out. There's that one. Oh, I'm knocking papers down. There's this one here. Very beautiful. It looks like snowflakes and it's glittery. And then there's this gorgeous, gorgeous paper. Let me actually move the camera so that you guys can see this a lot better. Because it's so pretty. Do you see how beautiful this paper is? See, it's textured, which makes it so much more fun. And then this one here is glitter and it looks just like snowflakes. Even though this doesn't go completely with my winter crystal um, color scheme, I think adding a little bit of this will just give it just such a beautiful look. I'm going to be using some of this beautiful metallic paper and some of this really pretty Italian Florentine paper as well. So these are my papers that I'm going to be using to decorate the journal with, just some of them. And I can't wait to show you the finished result. So that was a little look scene to the papers that I purchased. And we have a little friend here today. Loki, we need to say hi. Let me move the fancy papers. Because we don't want to ruin them. We were quite a pricey penny. Right? Oh, look at Loki. This is his favorite toy in the world. It's his little monster pizza. It's his favorite. There you go, bud. This is Loki, you guys. <laughs> All right, say bye. Okay, you want your pizza? I need to start decorating the pages with papers and fabric, and this is one of my favorite parts to the whole process. So that is what's going to be happening right now. I also got these in the mail today. Can you see them? They're absolutely beautiful. So these will actually be in the journals as well and is some fabric bundles that I'm going to be creating for next week. Really beautiful. All right, let's get back to work. Right now I am sorting through my fabric. Just such beautiful fabrics and I'm picking out which ones I want to use in my journal. 
And then I also, I want to show you guys this. I found my little sketchbook. It's my TN, and this is where I was brainstorming the fabrics and the embellishments for my Christmas journals. This was a couple of months ago when I first purchased this fabric. And I just put all of the fabrics together that I thought might make a cute little journal um, journal collection. So I'm going through my lace scrap bin. These are scraps from the linen and lace textile kit. It was in this little bucket where I found this. It's vintage snowflake trim. It says keepsake snowflakes. I just think it's so cute. And then here is some more beautiful fabric that I pulled out. And then some more really beautiful trims. Tabs are being made. Beautiful laces. I cannot wait to put these on the edges of the pages. Lovely sequins. Just having so much fun decorating my journals. I am currently decorating the pages. I'm so sorry for my voice. I actually woke up with my voice was lost. So I'm slowly getting it back. I sound like a toad. <laughs> and everything looks so beautiful. All of my journals are here and I'm just going through and decorating it and it's a lovely process. The journals are finally finished. I have finished sewing all of the decorative elements on the sides and making all of the pockets. This is the blue cover and then this is the mint cover. Super similar. They look like sisters. But this one just has a little bit more of those deep blue sequins on the cover. All of the jewelry is in this little container. Now I'm gonna move on to decorating the sides of it with beads and to make the ephemera to go with it. The beautiful journals of the Winter Crystal Collection. <laughs> <laughs> 